Hi, welcome to Oxford Analytica's weekly video briefing. My name is Chris Oates. I'm the analyst for North America at Oxford Analytica, and I'm joined with Benjamin Charlton, who is senior analyst for the Asia Pacific region. President Barack Obama this week is in Asia. He's visiting in Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, and Malaysia. And we're here to discuss some of the outstanding issues in U.S.-Asian relations. So, Benjamin, I suppose the first question is, what are some of the big issues that you think Asian leaders will be asking President Obama when he visits their countries? Well, I think the big question is the level of U.S. commitment to the region, essentially. Um, the so-called uh, Asian pivot has uh, receded uh, in terms of public attention, certainly, uh, amid the events in the Middle East, in Syria, and most recently in Ukraine. And this has led uh, to some questioning in the region about the level of U.S. commitment um, as uh, China's influence and China's uh, military capabilities uh, and assertive behavior vis-a-vis uh, -vis its neighbors continue to grow. Yeah, I think that's a, a big topic, and I think it's understandable from their perspective that when you read in the, the newspapers that John Kerry, the Secretary of State, is in Israel, is in uh, Geneva talking about Iran, is in Geneva talking about Syria, is in Geneva talking about Ukraine, that there would be the perception that the uh, United States is less committed to Asia than it would have been uh, when in 2011 it, promo it promoted the idea of this pivot. However, I think that is slightly uh, misstating what the nature of the pivot is. It was never going to be a full shift of U.S. attention to Asia. And it seems like it was a much more gradual and slow-moving process reflecting the rising importance of that region in terms of share of global GDP, uh, in terms of the various security issues that are going on, and also in terms of the fact that the Middle East will be of almost inevitably less importance given that U.S. troops are no longer in Iraq and are, are drawing down quite rapidly from Afghanistan. So it was more of a reflection of the shifting importance of the various regions in the world from a, a geopolitical and security point of view. And so the U.S. response is much more about shifting troops into the regions gradually. Uh, the Navy is going to move from a 50-50 Atlantic-Pacific split towards a 60-40 Pacific uh, Atlantic split. Uh, they're moving some rotational units in, Marines into Australia, uh, a cavalry unit into South Korea, some ballistic missile defense ships in J into Japan. But overall, it's not as if every soldier coming out of Afghanistan is now going to Guam or Okinawa. Um, so th this sounds very much, uh, certainly this is how it's perceived in Beijing, as um, an attempt to contain China, um, first to, to um, deploy more military assets to the region. Um, it would clearly be uh, China that they have in mind mm -hmm. when they're doing that, and also diplomatically to uh, uh, tighten relations with uh, U.S. allies and tighten relations between U.S. allies uh, with an eye very much on China. Do you think this idea of containment is, is the right way to think about this? I think containment is one good way to think about it. I think deterrence is another. The United States would like to view itself as an offshore balancing power. The Asia-Pacific region does have China, emerging superpower, but it also has Japan, which is a major power, and although it doesn't have nuclear weapons, it certainly could acquire them very easily with its technological base. And other issues such as overlapping shipping lanes, uh, what's going on in the South China Sea with various comp competing claims. The United States is very worried that one of these will spark off a, some sort of conflict, or even that an escalating security dilemma drives the powers into uh, fear and a situation where a, a conflict is much more likely. So it feels that it would rather have influence in the region and use that influence to prevent a breakout of tensions and to prevent the rise of China from being uh, a potential destabilizing force and a potentially destructive force for the rest of the world economy, which relies so much on the Asia-Pacific region. Now. Another of uh, Obama's priorities during the trip is the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, Free Trade Agreement, um, which involves uh, the US and uh, Japan, the, the, the first and third largest economies in the world. Um, it would become uh, the uh, world's largest uh, regional free trade organization, potentially. And 
Uh, this is sometimes seen in the context of this containment idea as a economic counterpart to the military and diplomatic pivot, uh, something which is designed deliberately um, to preclude Chinese membership, if not explicitly, then, then implicitly by, by, by setting conditions which um, it is known China will, will not accept. Do you, do you think this idea of economic containment is, is um, an accurate one? I think in that area, it's much different than the pivot. The pivot, security-wise, you can certainly see why China is the main driving factor in rising U.S. concerns. In the economic sense, I've, I feel that the TPP is much more a, a sense of the best trade deal that the U.S. thought it could get. I think there are, given the amount of U.S. business in China, there would be great demand for a trade deal with China that allows greater uh, U.S. Uh, goods to that country. But that simply wasn't going to happen at this point. There are too many barriers. And one of the big issues in the TPP at the moment is int uh, intellectual property rights and protection of intellectual property. It's possible that that can be accomplished in a trade deal with Japan, which has a high technology sector, and with some of the other countries, which are relatively smaller and therefore uh, more amenable to uh, U.S. Uh, demands. Also, Australia is in the, the TPP uh, in various countries in Latin America who are, are uh, you would say, certainly much more amenable to intellectual property rights than China. Mm -hmm. So although China has been excluded and although it's certainly true that China wasn't going to ever meet those demands and those, uh, those standards, I think that's an inevitable part of where the two economies are right now rather than a deliberate goal and an economic component of this pivot to Asia. But Benjamin, what are some of the issues just in the broader security sphere of uh, US and Asia? What are some of the security issues which are still outstanding, which could notwithstanding the pivot uh, cause some troubles in the region? Mm -hmm. Well, getting the most attention I think of late are the uh, flashpoints in the East and South China Seas. Um, the most serious is uh, the dispute with Japan, um, between China and Japan, over the uh, Diaoyu uh, or uh, Senkaku Islands, as they're known in Japan. Uh, these islands are uh, under the administration of Japan. They have been uh, since the Second World War. Um, and they're claimed by China. And since 2012, um, the Chinese presence in the area has has increased dramatically. So we've 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 seen the the, the Chinese uh, civilian security uh, forces ships um, in Japanese territorial waters on on a routine uh, basis. We've seen uh, Chinese overflights of the airspace around the islands, and this 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 kind of pressure has really uh, very conspicuously been been stepped up. Um, the Japanese have responded um, with with a stepped up presence of their own, with a shift of uh, coast guard and uh, self defence force assets uh, towards the region. Um, uh, most recently, last week, with the launch of a project to construct a new uh, radar station on the nearest inhabited Japanese island to that area, um, with a deployment of around 100, 150 uh, self defence force uh, troops. Um, this gradual militarization of the issue, this, this, this um, increased presence and increased uh, movement of uh, military assets towards the area is a, a significant uh, risk. It, it, it lowers the barriers to escalation, it increases the speed with which uh, the military can become involved and um, the 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 scope for a crash um a clash uh on the uh, ground to sort of spiral um out of control i mean that's that's worrying and barack obama uh i believe it was yesterday said that the senkakus would be covered as part of the u.s japanese security treaty now what is it in the uh, japanese uh political scene where there is increasing um, uh, militarization in the United States is called normalization of their military. Now, what do you think that has any role in in that in 
encouraging the United States to expand, some might say expand, some might say just restate what already was, that the U.S. treaty covers those islands. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. Um, the U.S. has um, a difficult balance to strike here. Um, on one hand, they need to show China that they're committed to the defense of their ally. On the other, they need to avoid emboldening Japan to the degree that it can feel that it feels it can um, it can provoke China. It can behave behave more uh, assertively uh, towards China vis-a-vis -vis these these disputes. Um, the U.S. needs to, on one hand, uh, re reassure the Japanese um, to preclude the need for them to pursue an independent uh, defense policy. Um, should Tokyo believe that it can't count on the U.S.-Japan alliance, um, it's going to uh, develop its own military capacities um, a lot more quickly. This is going to alarm the Chinese. Um, much as the Chinese uh, distrust the United States, they, they distrust the Japanese even more uh, for historical reasons. Um, so on one hand, the uh, US pivot, uh, particularly the Japanese aspect, is, is aimed at China. On the other hand, it's also aimed at restraining the Japanese. So they're striking a pivot, uh, striking a balance while making a pivot, which is clearly a difficult thing. So thank you very much for watching this weekly briefing. For more information about this topic and, and many other topics about the global political economy, feel free to go to oxhand.com. And I uh, hope you have a nice day.